Brian Wilcox, you've been coming here for a long time. Yes, I've been coming here since the early 60s when I first moved to Ipswich and saw my first meeting on a Sunday afternoon and have been um, you know, following the thing ever since, since about 62. And that 62. was here at Foxwell? Yes, it, this in fact, as you, your viewers might or your listeners might want to know, this is the best track in the country. I've been to all most of the tracks in the country. In the last two or three years, I've been to a number of foreign tracks, but this is the best track in the country. So in Suffolk, we have the, the best stock car track there is. What was it like in those days? In those days, it was very much an event. Uh, these days, you can switch from channel to channel on television and radio and watch 20 sports in five minutes. In those days, it was a very large event here in Ipswich, there were very large crowds, only four heats in the afternoon and one final, but a tremendous build-up for the final of the afternoon. Uh, it used to start at 3.30, all finished by 6, but truly a great event. Uh, they used to race on the Saturday night at the Furs Stadium in Norwich, which is no longer there, and any driver wishing to, to be considered to drive at Ipswich had to drive at Norwich on the Saturday night. So they all raced up to Saturday night just to get qualified to come to the great event. Well, that was a qualifying event. It really was. You had to. There's so many drivers in those days. You just had to qualify on the Saturday night to be entitled to race here for the start and prize money and the kudos of racing in, the, in front of the big crowd here at Ipswich. And what sort of cars were, were racing there? I, I, although I started watching in the early um, 60s, I actually raced just for one meeting only in the in 68. And at that time, even at that time, I had a Y model Ford. That's a pre-model Ford. I lasted one race. I went round and then someone hit me so hard, the engine jumped right out of the car and onto the track. And that was my one outing in 68. After that, I took up uh, quieter things. Quite a things like what? Well, I, I then went into commentating. Uh, the, I did commentating for a couple of years for the Speedworth organization down at the Wimbledon and the Aldershot track. I greatly enjoyed that. I also uh, wrote the East Anglian column twice a week. I, I got the East Anglian, didn't want to know anything but football and cricket, but I pushed them and pushed them, and I managed to get a, a pre-article in every week about what was going to happen. Then I'll follow up after the great Sunday events. And finally, they're giving me as much time, space in the paper as I wanted. They're rather begrudgingly, because they're very much cricket and football done at the East Anglian. But but uh, we managed to get them considering East Anglia stock car racing with photographs and in those late 60s, 65 to 70, we had quite a good following in the local press. We only have to look around the stands here to see how popular it is and rightly so, it's great entertainment, isn't it? Football is the, the number one sport for the UK, that's the national sport, but stock car is very... It's not seen by so many people, but it's a tremendous spectacle. In America, where I was two months ago, in one track alone, there's 180,000 people at one race. That's one in every 200 people in America was at that one race that I was at in the Daytona track in February. So it's very, it's very big business there. There's 1,200 tracks. Here we've got about 15 tracks. There is a large following. Uh, the facilities aren't as great as they could be, as you can imagine, with the stadiums, but it's got a great following. It could be a great thing from the television point of view, we have very little coverage. It's a great sport and it's a great spectacle sport. Yes, I'll, I'll endorse that. I've really enjoyed myself so far and there's more to come. Was there always the, the, the three different uh, types of events? The bangers, the stock cars and the hot rods? Well, that's what you're seeing today as an Easter Monday special. But there are seven formulas in all from a whole range of the low-cost £50 bangers to the ones you're watching this afternoon which can cost you £25,000. And you can still hit the fence and write it off in a day. Very expensive. In my late age now, I'm in my early 50s, I've now taken up driving the large ones. Of, I always wanted to drive, and until I sort of started my own little business, I didn't have time to, uh, to do it, working day and night like everyone else. I'm now driving the 5 litre, the Formula 1 class in, with uh, Speedworth, and they've, they're, that, that's one of the seven formulas. And they're 5 litre engines, they're tremendous power, and they go down the straight at about 70 mile an hour, and you hit the fence at 70 mile an hour. Ooh, I it's not I, a very long straight. I mean, that's some acceleration to get up to that. This is the biggest track in the country. If you're, if, you're, if you're new to it today, and most tracks are about uh, 350 yards round. Uh, the Wimbledon is the biggest spectacle in the country. It's an enclosed stadium, much smaller than this. And we'll be there next Sunday when it'll be the figure of eight banger racing. And I'll be racing in the backup formula, the Formula Ones. And there's 20,000 people cheer you as you come through the tunnel. It's like gladiators coming out to do battle. And they everyone's willing you to injure yourself, which I've done on more than one occasion. Everyone wants you to get hurt, really. Well, Brian, very many thanks for your time. Okay. Would you like to choose a piece of music? Well, the all-time uh, greatest songwriter of all time is Bob Dylan. I'm convinced of that.